bugs? They're the worst, right? How about giant alien bugs that threaten innocent people? Now that's unforgivable. And incidentally, the gist of today's video, a review on The Bug Butcher, an arcade shooter ported to the Switch some months ago, made by Awfully Nice Studios and published by Two Awesome Studio, who also supplied review code. But enough about that. Time to bug these insects back. Now, if you're expecting some deep story from a game about shooting bugs, okay, you're forgiven. But no, there's no deep plot here, just the bare essentials. You are Harry, an exterminator with a knack for killing bugs and an ego as large as his guns. He gets a distress call from a facility that's being overrun by bugs, as told by one of the sole surviving scientists, and is tasked with fixing the problem. This involves going through the entire facility, protecting your defenseless scientist sidekick as you go, more on that later, and killing bugs. Simple. And there's not much else to say. Though for a simple story like this, sometimes its humor is actually pretty funny. The Bug Butcher is a 2D side-scrolling shoot-'em-up, where you are permanently restricted to shooting upwards to kill stuff. Older viewers might recognize this as being the gameplay from Super Buster Brothers, an old Super Nintendo game, while others may recognize it from Flash games like Bubble Trouble. Remember that one? For those who aren't familiar with either, the gameplay involves shooting enemies that come from above. When an enemy dies, it splits into two halves, mostly, a process which repeats until that enemy can't split anymore. This is largely true for Bug Butcher as well, but there are different elements added into the mix to make the game varied. Each area of the facility has its own unique gimmick, such as the robotics lab having destructible platforms, the garden having periodically vanishing walls, and the smelting area having a giant hammer that kills both you and any enemies on contact. These stage hazards add additional depth to the task of killing bugs, which is something you must do under a time limit in each stage. Another added element to micromanage is your defenseless scientist's sidekick, who as you'll find out quickly, might as well be Baby Mario under that hat for one simple reason. Yeah. Bug Butcher taps into Yoshi's Island of all things for its other central objective between stages, protecting your defenseless load, who cries out like an actual baby when he's grabbed. Oftentimes, a ceiling enemy will approach alongside the standard splitting enemies, and their sole purpose for existing is to try and abduct your hapless partner as a snack, so you must kill them before that happens. It's easy though, so it's not something you'll frequently lose a level to. For the main campaign, the above formula with all of its trappings stretches on for 30 stages, all with a star-based scoring system, incentivizing level replays to get the highest rank. Apart from that, there's an endless arcade mode, as well as a co-op mode to squeeze out some extra gameplay time after you're done with the campaign or want to do something different. The campaign, for its part, can be finished within two hours, possibly a bit more if you're trying for max rank and depending on how often you die which can be fairly often depending on your difficulty setting. For the purpose of this review, I played on easy after hearing some reviews saying that the game was difficult even on easy, but that's something I disagree with. Easy mode gives you about 8 hits before dying, so you can afford to take mistakes, though seriously reckless play will get you killed regardless, and easy won't save you from occasional cheap shots like getting swarmed with these frequently appearing facehugger enemies that instantly kill you if they jump on your face. Despite this, levels are short enough that death can feel cheap, so it's not a big deal overall. All this melds into a gameplay experience that's simple, yet fun, but also demands some dexterity from the player. To sum up the presentation in a word, smooth. A fast-paced shooter should have some fluid visuals to match, and Bug Butcher doesn't disappoint delivering a style that is equal parts cute and grotesque for what it's supposed to be. It also runs smooth as butter, so if you die, it's your fault and not over any technical issues. The techno soundtrack accompanying it is also fairly catchy, albeit something you won't necessarily hear all the time between the sounds of guns firing, insect guts exploding, and your crying baby scientist buddy. Oh and the quips of excitement that Harry delivers when he's about to unleash overkill on these poor bugs. 
So for $8 or your regional equivalent, the Bug Butcher is a worthwhile shooter to invest in if you're looking for something new, though its longevity depends on what type of player you are. Completionists will find themselves sinking in hours beyond the main campaign to complete every level perfectly, something which does demand high skill. A more casual-minded player might not necessarily be interested in a perfect score, so they could play the game in short bursts, finish the campaign within 2-3 hours, and maybe give occasional revisits afterwards for co-op and endless modes. That kind of varying longevity is arguably the game's key flaw in a general sense, since the straightforward gameplay also means that it's not much different every single time you revisit it. But that's for the end consumer to decide. So regardless of that, as a game, I am giving the Bug Butcher on the Nintendo Switch a 3.5 out of 5. So let us know what you think of the game in the comments if you buy it. A special thanks to Two Awesome Studio for making the review possible, and to our patrons who help keep our site up and running. Make sure to like the video if you want to see more, and subscribe for news straight from the source. I am Liquid12A, signing off.